welcome to my podcast. This is a podcast mostly about me thing, but also other things in life. My name is Emilia, I'm coming from Sweden, and I live in the middle part of Sweden with my husband and our four children. This is my second episode, and thank you all for the lovely comment on my first episode. I'm so happy, <laughs> and so kind, it did it really... It really did warm my heart so much, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you watched the other episode, you saw that I was almost finished with this cardigan. Skogsnilfejacke. It's a Norwegian pattern. And even though Norwegian and Swedish is similar, I did struggle with, with the language really hard. Because I'm not good in Norwegian at all. So I needed some help. So I called my grandma. And she's good on the Norwegian too. So, uh, so now it's finished. And I talked about these beautiful buttons. I really love them. Oh, I hope you can see it. So I'm pretty pleased, I will uh, insert some picture of it and I will also insert a little bit of a video when I do the sticking. I chose to do the stick uh, and do the reinforcement this time with a sewing machine. Often I do a crochet the reinforcement to the stick. I know that this button was a little bit of a heavy, so I chose them to do it with the sewing machine because it adds more like a firmer textiles so it don't will be so heavy and swappy. So that's coming up now, so you can maybe get some tips if you're never uh, have done a stick before or want a few tips how you can do it on a, the sewing machine so i hope you will enjoy it <laughs>
I hope you enjoy the video with the sticking and I hope it would be some helpful tips to anyone who will try and don't maybe have the courage yet to do a stick. It's not so hard. I <laughs> probably I could just cut this without reinforcement because it's very sticky yarn but I choose to do it just because of the heaviness of the button so I just want it a little bit firmer and the stiff, stiffness before I cut it up, open and I also did saw the sticking edges with the sewing machine uh, onto the side to add a little bit more stiffness to it. So that was my finished project for this week. I hope that I could show you the daffodil this week, that this should be some progress with it. Didn't go so well. I have not done a single stitch on it because my needle break. Yes, it's broke in two pieces. The cable is in the middle of the cable. It just uh, broke. So, and that's more like a woven cable, not this plastic one. And uh, so I cannot just do some surgery on them. Uh, often my husband used to do surgery on my knitting needles if they break and he do it with a lighter and he melt the plastic uh, in the needles and then he put the cable in again and he melts it so it stays that way but it didn't go this time because it's not plastic so now I have to wait for new cables but I have decided that I probably gonna have to duplicates on my cables so I at least have two of everyone and I, I do everything I do is on the uh, cables needles yes bear with me I'm not good at English where I am or was before I hurt myself so yeah all this medication do that I forget words and mess things up even though it's Swedish words so bear with me I hope it will be better when I'm more stabilized with the medication after the last surgery and what else yeah oh I have hand a dyed yarn this week I did it with the walnut and chestnut dyeing. I don't do acid dyes. I maybe should try it sometimes. I don't know. I cannot decide. I like to do do natural dyeing because I can just take the stuff from my mom's garden and use it. And. Uh, I will also insert a video of how I do my natural dyings, but in this video, uh, because it's uh, walnuts, you don't need a mordant, mordant uh, but you can use mordant. I always use alum, but uh, this time I use the alum for modification of the tones in the yarn so you can get uh, if you add it a little bit of a uh, alum you can get a pretty dark yarn and if you add some more you can go more to the red and you have more of a copper color i will show you the yarn first it's it will be a little bit a little snippet of a video how I do my uh, natural dyeing and I show you uh, how it will be done if you do it with other stuff that need the modules 
at first. So I will see you in a few seconds. the little snippet of the video I include with the Notre Dame and uh, this is how it went I need to rescan them but it uh, just had tried this morning so I didn't have the time yet so this is one that I added a little 
um, minor um, mo uh, modification on and that you see it was green before I dyed it and I over dyed it because I dyed this yarn in spring with hmm I can't remember <laughs> I will put it in the show notes I promise so this is one and then I used some more modifications and this becomes a rose almost looks yellow but it's more brown and look like oak tree almost I will insert a picture I promise so you can see the color because uh, my camera don't take that so well and then I added some more modification and this got a little bit brighter and the second one sorry for the skeins I promise I will reskein that was walnut and chestnuts but in the summer I have done a few others with this is with rosen roses and it's with pink roses and red roses and also some yellow roses so i hope the camera can take it up no it won't no oh, that's too bad and this is uh, wool i have used right wool <laughs> so some type of sheep wool and then i went to the forest with my little babies and we picked some blueberries and I did two skeins this with a blueberry and the same um, color uh, bait in the kettle <laughs> but it, got, it turned out to difference and you often say that berries is not the best to dye with and that's true because when if you wash them it is, it's gonna drop its color but this too I will not uh, wash even though it's wool but I gonna do some wool hanging to my best friend and gift it to her because I have named them Surviving Cancer because she had had a struggle with cancer for three years I think it's up to now and for a few weeks the call came when she said she's cancer free she had lymphoma and she had the tumors in her brain so I would do a wall hanging and gift it to her and I will also do a pair of socks for her but not with that yarn <laughs> that would be a wall hanging so then I also do this too with oh it's look like blue but it's more pretty blue I think this too I did with uh, oh I can't even remember stuff today I'm so messy in my head today oh now I remember maple leaves so I picked maple leaves and I boiled them up and let it uh, cool down to its lukewarm and I do also do that with the alum you boil it up with water and you don't uh, put the yarn into the water is lukewarm if you 
do put it in when it's warmer and you don't have a good yarn and you mess around with it in the kettle you would turn out with a really messy yarn and it's not gonna look nice i promise i have tried it and never again so th that was a little bit of the stuff i had done this week but that i said before that my cable broke on the daffodil that's mean I probably gonna have a new cast on to show you and I have so I went stash diving maybe I have a little bit too much yarn if you ask my husband you can never have too much yarn please say that you cannot have too much yarn no I thought so so in the last episode I talked about Yiminitz and her pattern chicane and I do chicane light this would be a Malacca boxy top or short sleeved uh, sweater and this is the start and I will add a Uh, gray border to it uh, th uh, the neck ribbing and the hem will be in gray so it will be pink and gray and uh, I know it's not the, the most vibrant gray uh, vibrant pink it's more the soft one <laughs> and that's typical me but when I was uh, uh, stash driving I did find a skein of yarn and the problem is I think it's merino but I'm not sure because it don't have a label on it so what should I do with it I know somebody gifted me this I can't even remember who but I know someone gifted me this and I'm pretty sure it's wool. It's wool. I have to do the lighting test. When you take a strain of the yarn and you take a lighter and you put it on fire, then you will see if it's acrylic or if it's wool. But if you have it for 21 years and do some spinning, you can just do it by touch. But that means that you have, have some feelings in your finger and my feelings in my fingers so good anymore so I did the lighting test <laughs> so I know it's wool but I thought I maybe should do some socks with it hmm. but maybe it's not nylon in it or something else to do the strengthening to the socks so they might just worn out and fall apart and then it would be a waste of time to do some socks so i don't know if you have any idea please leave a comment to tell me what should i do with it it's i will see if i can scan it so I can show it more like more like this so you see it's blue go to red and purple so I don't know do you have any tips so please please <laughs> tell me what I should do with it So, that's what I have been up to this week, almost nothing. <laughs> mm. I have a few meltdowns, yes I had, a few breakdowns this week and nothing funny at all, it's been quite warm. I don't like warm, I like snow and ice and frost. 
that's my type of wedding I'm at 40 degrees celsius so you not can go outside without dying so <laughs> and uh, my nerve pains get quite a bit of a struggle when it's warm because it's horrible when it's not warm but when it's warm it's got a lot worse and i've been on x-ray by the way for my neck and the bleeding in my neck it's still there and it has not started to heal yet too bad so this head pain headache and the pain in my eyes seems like it's not gonna go away for a while so i can only do the best of the situation so but as i said i had to also spin but uh, when you lost the feeling in your fingers it's not so easy to do the drafting of the fiber so if you here's a bit of merino if you draft it too hard you cannot draft it out so you have to hold it just hold it and then you draft oh this is messy And if you just hold the fiber and you draft, then it easily would go out and then you can spin it. But I cannot draft with my left hand. I used to draft with my left hand and hold the, the fibers in my right hand. But now I have to relearn to draft with my right hand and hold the fiber with my left hand and the left hands don't have any feeling at all so it's pretty hard i used i have all i have to pause and look at my hand and remind myself that i'm holding too tight or holding too loose so <laughs> sometimes it went out and i get the whole fiber in the spinning wheels that would not look pretty i promise so i went back to the beginning with the spindle and yeah this is what it looked like right now it's not so bad but it could be better a lot better <laughs> i promise but i did my best to relearn and do it in my head it get backwards when I do it with the wrong hands but I will make it I'm to survive telling myself I'm gonna make it and relearn every stuff with just one hand and one arm when I realized my arm didn't work I started to knit again after the first surgery with just one hand because my other hand was paralyzed too now my other hand is not paralyzed anymore it's almost good uh, i have a very good function now uh, after the last surgery i had but the arm is still paralyzed so i cannot move it i, I have to move it to with my fingers to like the spider to climb away with my arm or I use my other arm, hand to move the hand because I can move my arm so I need help with it and that's quite annoying so I also do uh, try to remember, uh, remember myself that you can relearn and you have to stay positive because I think otherwise it's not gonna be good at all so i stay positive and focused on the good things in life my family is healthy or not my husband is sick <laughs> but he got a cold so he will be uh, back on work not this week 
for the next week because he had to stay at home a week a whole week because he got some medication for his sickness but he will be fine i promise you but he's a little bit man cold you know man and a cold <laughs> so. but uh, without them oh god i don't know what i should do without them that doesn't work because my husband needs to help me with the clothing and with my hair so i am relying very much on my husband but he's a sweetheart so it's not a problem he's uh, the biggest and most stable mountain in my life so I'm happy for him. And my children helped me too, a lot. Oh, talk about children. My oldest son, son he's, he's the one who's play hockey and is a goalie. He come into my bedroom in the morning. He used to scream, Mama, 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 do you know the hockey season is beginning in four weeks? And I just get panicked. Did it? Didn't they just go for the break for summer just yesterday? No, no, they didn't. It's have a, been three months without hockey. So <laughs> then I used to come and think of it. Maybe it's time to cast on some socks. And as I said, I was dash driving. And my husband gave me a um, pretty gift when I was a bit down after the first surgery and they told me that my arm is gonna stay paralyzed so he gave me a, a box with a little unicorn on Oh, look at these mini things. How beautiful are they? They are so sweet. <laughs> so, I will probably do some socks with it. And how could I forget that these gorgeous little babies? Oh, this lady is. Look so sad, and they are super soft. They are. Hmm. I should have my glasses, but I haven't. Seventy-five percent merino and twenty-five percent nylon, and it's ten grams and three hundred three hundred and forty meters. And it's a perfect. I had another box too, with more vibrant color, but all of them, they, them, I have promised my youngest son to put in his uh, coziest memory blanket, I think that's better, yes, coziest memory, memories blanket, and that's a free pattern on Ravelry, I will link it, link it below. Uh, I will also link the sweater from Nimnitz below, so you can go and look at that if you want to knit it. It's really beautiful. This is more like a summer top, but I do it in merino. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. If I don't do it in merino, I'm probably going to do it in alpaca. I have the two favorites thing to knit in. But that's just because it's more slippery, so I don't have to fight with my left hands. I Before I get paralyzed, I wore more like this Icelandic yarn and Shetland yarn with a little bit more rustic feeling because I always thought that it would look nicer and the more you use the garments yeah. 
it, it will just be nicer. I don't think Marino have the, that type of character to it. Maybe it's just a little, little overrated, maybe. But I use the benefits of it because it's more slippery. So I don't have to overuse my hand so much because if I overuse it, I quite end up in a lot of pain. So I have to do my best to do some compromises to <laughs> stay on it, to keep, continue do the things I love to do. And that's knitting. I did love to spin, but I will get tired. I will get it again, I promise. I will try my best and I will never, never, ever stop trying. So, what else? Oh, I have... I will do a new cast on really soon two new cast -ons. and this time sock don't count because <laughs> it will be a lot of cast on and socks because I live in Sweden we literally can have four season in 24 hours so socks is necessary <laughs> so I don't count them then and I don't count the blankets so uh, I would do a dress to my youngest daughter and the dress the dress its name is Soria Moria dress. I hope I pronounced that right because that's it's a Norwegian pattern too. But this pattern get you can get it in English too, so I pretty relieved. Oh. No more Norwegian patterns for a while now, <laughs> because it's have been a struggle. I promise. And I don't have a picture on it on this pattern, because my colors in my uh, um, oh my uh, ink. To my printer <laughs> went out so it's just gray so i don't think you can see the pattern good no you can't but i will add a link to it so this i will also cast on in a very short time i will cast it on in It's gonna go away from me, please stay. Mm, I have tangled up myself, so I will do it in this yarn and okay, got some dust <laughs> in this yarn, and this is from Permit. I will. Um, write it in the show notes below exactly what, uh, what yarn it is but it's super soft and my little girl she's allergic to things who scratches so it has to be super soft and I don't do anything in acrylic I don't like acrylic so this is also merino of course. Did I say it was permit? It's not permit. It's the other one I guess we will cast on soon. It's baby merino from drops. Sorry, it's not permit. So that's one um, cast on. Soon cast on, I should say. And uh, the other cast on I will do as soon the yarn arrives is I think I gonna take the Sam Friends pattern but I will use 
I stand with wool. Because I feel it's time now to struggle a bit with my favorite wool. <laughs> and that's just Icelandic wool. I, I like the character of this Icelandic wool. And uh, it's the thin one. It's not that lovely. It's Einband. So it's have the same um, thickness as uh, uh, oh, Jameson of Shetland's Spindrift. So it's almost the same. You almost end up uh, understanding the same. Uh, oh, gauge. Oh, I can't even remember what it said since we just showed. <laughs> so uh, I had a little bit home and I did a swatch and it was on spot on the gauge of uh, the century of Marie Wallens. She do it in Spindrift and I would do it in other colors but in Icelandic wool so it's it not going to be the same. Uh, I add a little bit of me in it and a little bit of modification. I always do. <laughs> That's my kind of thing to do. I don't think I have fallen a full pattern in 15 years or so. So I don't use the stick to pattern. Uh, so it's I always end up doing some modification, uh, maybe it's uh, more fitted or more boxy or I do a, uh, a setting sleeve to a drop shoulder or a drop shoulder to um, more of a shoulder who just goes more of the top of the shoulder. So I always do some type of modifications. That's just me. So with a lot of coffee and a few hours with knitting needles, maybe I have a good beginning for next, next episode, who will be out in a week. Hopefully, I will try to have a new episode out every week, but it can be two weeks apart if I do have some doctor appointments and they want to do some surgeries I hope not for a while now but the bleeding in the neck concerns them and they talk about surgery and I just went oh I'm not listening I don't hear the word you said so I'm pretty tired of hospitals and surgeries and doctors and surgeons and you name it. So I just want to be home, sit down in my chair and knit. And I don't want my husband to go in and tell me the car broke down or something. I just want the peace and quiet for two or three hours and just knit. Just one day. <laughs> Please, real soon. But it will be better soon when he goes back to work and the kids start at school again and my youngest one go back to kindergarten so then I can have some free time and just relax a bit because when you have four children and even though we have a pretty serene, serene injury we don't have time to rest. It's always something to do. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, but I hope I will uh, have finished my chicane of Yimnes next episode. And I hope all of you have a wonderful week. If you like my podcast, please subscribe. And uh, if you have question on anything, you can. Send me 
a message on Instagram or you can leave a comment down below and I will reply as soon as I can. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye!